you run a laser through a beam expander, any dust that's in the laser or the beam expander shows up as noise on the projected image. And for an interferometer, you don't want to have that kind of a background in illuminating the interferograms. So you use a special filter to clean up this noise, and it consists of a beam expander or a lens and a pinhole and a mechanism to line everything up. Now you can buy these at Newport or Edmonds, Thor Labs, but they usually run around about a thousand dollars and that doesn't even include the pinhole. And you, you can find these a little bit cheaper than that if you look around, but I want to build one myself. So I need a microscope objective and I found this in my junk drawer. Got it from Edmund Scientific years ago and looks like I took the flange off of it. I'm going to set that in a little V block that I had and it just barely fits but it does fit and that'll accurately move my objective back and forth and I put the sides uh, I put some Teflon tape um, 10 thousandths thick and I got that from McMaster car and that works nice and easy I'll have to have uh, some means of, uh, of moving it and uh, I'm gonna mount this on a, my base this is my base it's made out of hard maple plywood it's from recycled flooring from years back um, I suppose you could use aluminum or black Delrin maybe gonna put that on there And then I'm going to have to have springs in some way of uh, adjusting this back and forth. That will be my, my next step. Well, this is my finished focuser. I've got two springs that uh, hold it in place. I've got a U-shaped one in the front to, to push it back. And then one on top to keep it... Uh, clamped in place on the uh, on the V block and that works pretty well you could only need to move it just a small distance back and forth and then uh, and then on the back side I've got a 440 screw that pushes it forward and I had to drill a hole for the laser light to go through so that works out pretty well it, it'll my fingers will be in the way of the laser but I can I can adjust the screw uh, with a wrench this is my XY adjuster for the pinhole and for a holder for the pinhole I'm using a neodymium magnet and They've got a really nice finish on it, very smooth finish. And so I'm using that. Uh, this is the holder. And on first I drilled about a half inch hole at the height of the um, microscope objective. And then I glued on a piece of 5,000 shim stock, just regular shim stock drill the hole through it uh, didn't drill very well so I used a Dremel and a stone to smooth it up and then I put on a piece of um, of my 5000 Teflon tape and uh, this uh, you know didn't have magnet uh, moves real really nice on there and now I have two adjusters, which are again um, 440 screws, uh, th and I tapped into a block a block of uh, maple. And I found out that I don't really need to use a return spring because whenever, whenever you push the magnet um, away from the hole of this shim stock, um, it. Uh, 
it doesn't like that hole so it wants to be centered so I can adjust this magnet up and it will uh, um, it will want to return it's also attracted to the uh, to the steel uh, screws too that helps but it doesn't go very far below centered so um, if I if I put my pinhole below center it may not reach it but then again I can always um, just rotate the magnet and that'll be above center so this is a pretty neat mechanism pretty simple and this will go on front of my microscope objective um, I put the adjusters on the bottom so I could have access to the uh, to the pinhole One of the things that really surprised me was how difficult it is to make a good pinhole. That's a darn near impossible. I thought I'd use a needle and I got, grabbed uh, some from my wife's sewing kit. And I found you, you gotta have something behind it and acrylic, this is a piece of acrylic that um, seemed to do the best for a backstop. And I thought I could just take a needle and and poke a hole in a piece of aluminum foil well it didn't work out too well well first of all my wife's needles weren't sharp at all if you look at them in a high powered microscope they all were even kind of rounded on the end so I went to Walmart and got a pack of the smallest needles I could find 0.4 millimeters but most of those were were the same way not very sharp at least under a high powered microscope so what I ended up doing was taking a um, an Arkansas stone and and sharpening the, the tip of the needle and I had to do that a number of times to get it sharp on trial and error and I stuck it in a, a wooden wooden dowel like this and the best technique I found was to was just to barely barely touch the the aluminum foil and then uh, spin the dowel just like a drill bit well eventually uh, uh, it, do, it does go through but it, it'll usually made a hole much bigger than than uh, what I needed and actually the if you go by Edmund's little drawing there and calculate the pinhole size it comes out to about five microns and the best uh, starting out the best I could do was about 50 microns so both with some practice I was still only able to get it down to about 34 microns and still have a good good round hole and spinning this may, does make a round hole so um, I'm gonna probably have to buy a pinhole to try out my special filter I screwed it down on a, a block of wood and then I found a, a block of wood to hold my green laser pointer at the right height. And I firmed it down with some modeling clay to hold it steady. Then I got a piece of white cardboard for my screen. Well, I'm going to try and um, line up my special filter. And I mounted my best um, pinhole it's aluminum foil and I cut, cut it roughly circle and I mounted it on my magnet with just a little bit of my wife's hand cream just with a q-tip and, and a circle and then press it on here and it'll it'll stay forever like that so I'm going to put that on 
Ugh. Slippery thing. Put it on my filter. Then I have my have a laser pointer. Oh, I forgot. First thing we want to do is to make sure that that our laser is lined up with the microscope objective should be in a straight line with the microscope objective then I can put my pinhole back in and with focused all the way back I want to try and find let's see let's look at the screen now find a little green spot on the screen for my pinhole okay took me a while to find it but you should scan around on one of my adjusters I finally found it but now it's just a little hole a little point and I'm way past focus so I'm I need to focus my microscope in until it enlarges yeah, it doesn't seem to be moving yet and it's drifting, you can see it's drifting low so I always want to keep it on center and it's, it's bright, bright in the center and just keep moving the microscope objective closer and keep adjusting it so it stays on center and it gets brighter as it gets nearer focus and it's almost there now this is a 30 34 micron filter and there you could still see some unevenness in the in the field but it's not nearly as noisy as it was before so I can get a better close up like that. But that's about as good as it's going to do. <clears throat> it's considerably better than it was before.